For those of you who are watching online this morning, the title of my sermon is When Temptations Come. The story in our lectionary text we have today is the temptation of Jesus. <clears throat> but before we dive into the scriptures, let's set the stage for our story. We covered the baptism of Jesus back in, in the Jordan River in the third chapter of Luke, back at the beginning of January. And let me read the actual baptism recorded in verses 21 through 22 as a refresher. Now when all of the people were baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. So let's move right into our scripture now this morning and hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 1 through 13, which happens right after this baptism. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness where for forty days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up, and showed him in an instant all of the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all of this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And when the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Beloved, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. How we have this story is unclear since the temptation was in the desert and it was just Jesus alone with the devil. Perhaps Jesus privately told his three chief disciples this story. However, we know from the introduction to Luke's gospel that Luke himself investigated everything carefully from the very first and relied on the account of eyewitnesses before he wrote his gospel. So before I unpack this message, let me give you some encouragement about temptations. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, it says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us approach this message and this subject of temptation with full knowledge that Jesus knows exactly what we are going through when we are tempted. If only we could quickly recognize that we are under temptation and immediately turn to Jesus for guidance and strength. The very thing that happened to me this morning. Within the first five minutes of being up and in prayer, I recognized that I was under attack, turned to Jesus for strength and guidance, and to the Holy Spirit to recall scripture that would strengthen me. So let's dive into our scripture now. Jesus had been just been baptized in the Jordan River, 
And then in verses 1 and 2 of our scripture, it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those 40 days, and when they were over, he was famished. In my message about Jesus' baptism, I wondered out loud whether the Holy Spirit had left Jesus once he was led into the wilderness. I believe that this was probably something that Jesus had to face on his own and in his own power. And I believe that he could since he is the Son of God. I have a couple of notes about these first two verses of Scripture that I want to share. Jesus underwent temptation by the devil for a period of 40 days and 40 nights before the three specific temptations that we have here in our Scripture. So during those 40 days and 40 nights, Jesus ate nothing and drank nothing. Moses was on the mountaintop 40 days and 40 nights receiving the Ten Commandments from God that he wrote on stone tablets. And he ate nothing and drank nothing for those 40 days. God sent an angel to feed Elijah and to give him strength for his 40-day and 40-night journey to Mount Horeb without food, as recorded in 1 Kings chapter 9, verses 7 through 9. And the theme of 40 days and 40 nights run throughout the Bible as we continue and we read about the great flood in the days of Noah when it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. However, I believe the 40 days in the desert facing temptation corresponds to the 40 years that God had Israel wander in the desert after they rebelled against him and refused to enter the promised land. God tested them in the desert for 40 years until the last of that adult generation had died in the desert. Now we come to the first of the three temptations that are recorded for us in Scripture. Again, these three specific temptations come after that 40-day and 40-period of temptations in the desert. In verse 3, the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Twice in our scripture, the devil says, If you are the Son of God. Why does the devil not recognize who Jesus is? I have a few thoughts, but no concrete answers. My first thought is that the Holy Spirit has left Jesus to face these temptations alone. And the next thing that occurs to me is that Jesus is not in his glorified and transfigured state since he is here on earth walking among men. Remember the message from last week that Jesus was transfigured on the mountain when he met with Moses and Elijah. He was transfigured into glory and was in a glorious state. And Peter, John, and James got to witness the kingdom of God at the transfiguration of Jesus. But now I believe that the Spirit had left Jesus during these 40 days and 40 nights, and he is not in a glorified, transfigured state, and perhaps that is why he is unrecognizable by the devil. After Jesus returns from the wilderness and is filled with the power of the Holy Spirit again, says verse 14, the demons recognize who he is even before he speaks. In verses 33 and 34 it says, In the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out in a loud voice, Let us alone! What have you do to us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. The Matthew Henry commentary has a different view on this. 
That commentary states, He was full of the Holy Spirit, who had descended on him like a dove. He now had greater measures of the gifts, graces, and comforts of the Holy Spirit than ever before. Those are well armed against the strongest temptations that are full of the Holy Spirit. You can decide which view makes more sense to you. This first temptation comes in an area of physical need, and that need being bread for substance. Jesus is tempted by the devil to use his own power to satisfy his desires rather than relying on God to supply all that he needs, as noted in the Bible Knowledge Commentary. But the reply to the devil in verse 4 says, Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Notice that Jesus says, It is written. Jesus relies on the Holy Scriptures to combat these temptations. Jesus quotes scripture from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, which says, He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The next temptation recorded here comes in the form of glory and authority. In verses 5 through 7 it says, Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, to you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I can give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. The devil is tempting Jesus with glory and authority if he will worship him. Truly, the devil has no idea who he is talking to because as the Son of God and part of the Holy Trinity, Jesus already has glory and authority. In verse 8, it says, Jesus answered him, It is written, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Again, Jesus turns to the scriptures to combat these temptations when he quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 13, which says, The Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. And then to drive the point home, Jesus quotes from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 20, which says, you shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone shall you worship. To him you shall hold fast. And by his name you shall swear. The last temptation that is recorded for us here is a testing of God's protection. And again, the devil is trying to get Jesus to do something that proves he is the Son of God. In verses 9 through 11 of our scripture, it says, Then the devil took him up to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. From these verses, we can see that the devil also knows scripture, and he quotes from Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. But the devil tries to twist the scriptures to his benefit and his advantage 
to no avail. And Jesus once again quotes from the law of Deuteronomy in chapter, verse, in chapter 6, verse 16, which says, Do not put the Lord your God to the test as you tested him at Massa. Deuteronomy means copy of the law, and it was given to the Israelites by Moses while they were on the edge of the Jordan River before they crossed over to occupy the promised land. And Jesus uses these laws to thwart the temptations of the devil. Take note of this last verse of Scripture. Verse 13 says, When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. If the devil has no success in tempting us in some area, he will come back at an opportune time. That is usually a time when we are weak and tired. And I'm sure everyone here has had some success in resisting the temptations of the devil only to fall short sometime later when you are weak and tired. Remember these words from 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Let me share with you some encouragement from 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will also provide a way out so you may be able to endure it. The story of the temptation of Jesus proves that he treasured the word of God in his heart and in his mind and uses that to thwart the temptations of the devil. Let me remind you again of these encouraging words from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every way, in every respect, has been tested as we are, yet without sin. I need to repeat the message that I try to stress every week. We have to rely on the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the Word of God has to live in our hearts and in our minds. The only way this happens is when we read the Word of God each and every day and treasure those words in our hearts. And in our minds. Let me summarize this message with a few bullet points. We are going to be tempted by the devil. That is a given. No testing us, no testing has overtaken us, which is not common to everyone. Let Jesus be the role model that we imitate. When we are being tempted by returning to the word of the Lord our God, relying on the scriptures to help us. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Through the salvation of Jesus, our sins have been forgiven, past present and future and we we are called a child of God in the name of the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Amen